Do you ever just like smell your tea? This is vanilla chai and it smells so good. It's like fall, the essence of fall, but anytime you want. Hello, <laughs> welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'd like to invite you to join me as we go through just a few of the things that I do in the one and a half to two hours that I have of just mama time. It's time for me to make dinner and perhaps even plan for some future meals for the rest of the week. We are going to start out by making a simple shortbread. So a couple of months ago, I was diagnosed with non-celiac gluten intolerance, um, <clears throat> which I don't know if you know much about that, but basically it means that any type of gluten that I come into contact comes causes a lot of bloating and gas and honestly for me a lot of severe pain it took us months to figure out what it was so I've been reading and researching and apparently a lot of the wheat that's grown here in America has a slightly higher gluten content and so therefore a lot of people are very very sensitive to it here in the United States but they're not sensitive to it when they go over into Europe for instance and so what I've done is an experiment may work or may not. You guys may never actually see this video, but if it works, what I've done is I've ordered some French wheat. Uh, it is just all purpose flour that is imported directly from France. Um, and so we're going to see, and we're going to learn together if this actually is a little bit gentler on my stomach. I'm going to try a very small amount after I've done it. And I figured I'd start off with a simple vegan shortbread. Um, I don't have any strawberries, but uh, not shortbread, shortcake. I don't have any strawberries, but I do have everything else. So we're gonna just try it and see, and if it turns out well, then uh, you guys will see the recipe, and I will uh, have found a very expensive, but attainable way to eat my breads and other such items. And we will go along on the journey together. And if not, then ow. You'll probably never see this, but uh, it'll be painful for me, and uh, I will know that I should probably avoid it just forever. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing this recipe calls for is your dry ingredients, and we are going to start off with, well, we're going to half the recipe just in case, but even if I can't eat it, the rest of the family will be thrilled. So, oop, this doesn't work as well as I'd hoped. This. And the recipe does not call for sifted, so we are not going to. Besides, I'm basically just making a fancy muffin, so I'm not that worried about it. Not muffin, uh, biscuit, excuse me. Okay, and then one tablespoon sugar. Half of a tablespoon of baking powder. And quarter teaspoon of salt. And that is our dry ingredients. And I like to move my stuff out of the way when I'm done using it that I don't accidentally grab it a second time because that's just super annoying. All right, and it looks like the next thing we're gonna do is move on to our, well, the recipe calls for cold butter, but I'm trying to keep everything as healthy as possible and I try to stay with animal products wherever I can. So it says we're supposed to use a quarter cup of cold butter before cutting that in half. So we're going to go with two tablespoons of coconut oil. Probably should have mixed all this up first. Okay, well, too late now. That's okay, it will work out just fine. Then we're going to cut that in until it makes a crumb-like consistency, breadcrumb-like consistency. Oh, so 
they mixed it. Okay, and once we get this to the approximate consistency that we want, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. I am definitely not a professional. I am still learning how to do a lot of this stuff. And you get to learn with me. Now, hopefully, if I make mistakes, you can learn from them and not make those same exact mistakes again. Next thing we're going to do is add half of a cup. No, I'm going to use the same cup. Half of a cup of, it says 2% milk. I'm going to stick with my soy milk. Because it has a good protein content. And we're going to add that in until we get a nice dough. I love making bread. Bread was always one of my favorite things to make. And then they told me that I was not able to do that. And I was thoroughly devastated because I had just gotten really good. I don't know if you watched uh, anything with like Paul Hollywood and British baking show and all that. It was my favorite show. I have watched every episode multiple times and have multiple books on bread making. And it's just something that I've always loved. And so to take that away was just really rough on me. And so I am trying to see if it is at all possible to make this work with regular flour. And if it is not, then that's okay. I will move on to finding some other gluten-free options that will work and taste very good. Obviously, they're not going to taste the same. It will be different, but we will see. Next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and move this over to our tray. And I'm dirtying up yet another dish or a spoon. I suggest putting them on there on an oiled tray. I don't like using oil if I don't have to. Some things call for it, like the recipe. And later, if this works out, I'll try to augment that recipe and maybe remove some of the oil. But we shall see. For now, we are going to just divide this guy up to four biscuits. Kind of drop them on here in a semi-roundish shape. They do not have to be perfect because no one is perfect. And that is okay. And you can't see them. So we're going to move them over here. And look, see, some of them are much larger than others. And some of them are very much not. That's okay. Again, perfection is not what we're going for. Flavor is the key here. I've never tried this recipe, so I honestly have absolutely no idea if it's any good. The idea in this case is just to see if this flour doesn't hurt me. Because, you know, that's no fun. All right, I think... We've got these guys about as good as they're going to get. And we're gonna pop them in the oven at 425 and let them cook and do their thing. Fingers crossed. Hopefully this works out because this looks delicious and I miss bread. So while this is actually cooking and we're waiting, I might as well go ahead and start on dinner. Now I found another recipe here that I have never tried and so we're going to try it together. Um, however, I have looked all of the ingredients over and it sounds like the kind of thing that my family would love. The great thing about this recipe is that if it actually tastes good and my family all love it, this will be something that I can make and I can put in the freezer and I can start with my freezer meal preps again which is absolutely phenomenal and something that I have got to get back into because who has time every single night to make a meal from scratch? But that's exactly what I want. My family has a lot of special dietary needs. Um, I don't know if you've watched any of my other videos. I talk about some of the needs that my family has, including myself and my two small children. And so 
this kind of thing is something that I need to start doing more regularly and I thought I would bring you guys along and so maybe it can help you guys out and we can do it all together and all of us be a bit healthier and a lot happier. So I try to buy all of my produce organic but sometimes I just simply cannot afford that especially with the way the prices have gone these days. And so if I haven't grown it myself then I'm going to peel it. Now this recipe calls for one quarter cup of carrots, onions, and then a cup of potatoes. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of that ready. The carrots are to be diced. Since we're going to be cooking these guys all down, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that they're all about the same size. Again, nothing in my kitchen is perfect, but we do try to be close. All right, there's that guy. And I'm hoping that this is enough onion because, uh, well, that's all I have. So if not, then oops. <laughs> That's good. And the rest of the recipe actually calls for three, cutter, three quarters of a cup. So we're gonna go ahead and dice the rest of this baby. And hopefully it'll be enough. Well, it's gonna have to be enough because that's all we have. For those of you who don't know, my husband is actually military and today he is pulling a 24 hour shift. So I'm getting this prepared so that <clears throat> my children and I can go meet him out on post and uh, yeah that should be three quarters cup and we can have dinner together with him because I did not get enough food prepared from last night well I did but we had company over that was unexpected and so <laughs> the food that I was going to prepare ended up getting eaten and that is wonderful because we thoroughly enjoyed their company but that means that today I'm going to be making something fresh and new. All right, so that is for later. Get our carrots up out of the way. Next thing it calls for is one cup of potatoes. I did not get to grow anything this year because as I mentioned earlier, I was diagnosed recently with gluten intolerance and for about I don't know, eight months, I was in so much pain that I could barely function. I pretty much sat on a heating pad on my chair uh, and did the very basics to just keep my children from starving uh, and to keep my house from being disgusting. And so I was not able to get the garden planted that I wanted to have planted. And you know what, that's okay because we still have next year and I am actually starting to feel much better. And because I'm feeling so much better now this year coming up, I should be able to actually start my gardening. Ooh, look at these guys. They definitely look done. They don't, they don't feel like they have any kind of give to them. So we're gonna let these guys cool while we continue working on dinner. So I am not actually using hot water here. I'm just uh, measuring it out with my kettle because my water filter is all the way across the room and I don't feel like walking that far. So we've got dinner and dessert going. Let's see how this turns out. All right, while we are waiting on that, we are going to move on to the rest of the casserole. Now I don't have frozen hash browns, but I do have some that I bought from Sam's and they are, they're dehydrated. So I'll need to actually use my hot water kettle for hot water instead of just as a not have to walk all the way across the room kind of thing. And then we will go ahead and rehydrate those and uh, get everything together. Well, we've got that going. And we've got our hot water going, and we shall see. Okay, so I've never made this recipe before, 
and honestly, I have not used these potatoes a lot. So we are supposed to have a total of 30 ounces. So we're kind of going to rough estimate here. This says that we should put the same amount of water that we do the dry hash browns in here. And obviously I know these are gonna swell up some. Uh, so we're gonna start with three cups and we're gonna go from the three cups up to, well, three cups of boiling water. And we'll see how much these fluff up. If not, I'll just have to make some more. So uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna try. All right, so now we're going to add three cups of boiling water. <clears throat> two. Sorry, my water kettle was just buzzing too, so. Three. Hey, well the water line brought it up to uh, 28 ounces, we'll see. All right, so while those guys are rehydrating, we are going to put the rest of our ingredients to get those all together. <clears throat> says in a large bowl. Okay. We are going to put that there. I'm going to wind up using it all anyways, but I figured I might as well check it and see how much we're actually putting into it. <laughs> Looks like we actually have more than we need. Yay. Yeah, whatever. Not quite enough to freeze this time. So we are going to just put it all in there and we'll have a little bit more onion flavor and that is not a bad thing. It just means extra flavor. And as I've said, <clears throat> my family loves to have lots of flavor. Okay, so this calls for half of a cup of bell peppers. They technically calls for half of a cup of red. I do not have red, but that's okay. It'll just be a little bit less sweet and we can handle that. So what I'm going to do is anything that's actually left over, I'm gonna go ahead and dice this whole thing up, but any that's left over, I'm gonna go ahead and portion out into one cup measuring, uh, cup measured bag, and we will go ahead and put those in the freezer, and that way whenever I need some, some fresh bell peppers, all I gotta do is pull them out of the freezer and put them in there. Obviously, I wouldn't wanna put them in a salad like that, but I can definitely put them in anything that I'm gonna saute, any kind of marineras or anything well, really anything that I'm gonna saute on the stove or bake in the oven. Okay, so we're gonna pull out half of a cup. If I were going to be putting these up for longer term storage, I would actually go ahead and put them into a food saver style bag and remove the oxygen. But I know my family well enough and I know that we are going to end up eating these probably within the next week. So I really don't think that I'm going to need anything quite like that. <clears throat> and I'll go ahead and make sure that I record some of the times that I make things with this sort of stuff. So that you can see some different ideas of how to use your frozen stuff as well as fresh. All right, next thing we need to do, we need three quarters cup of spinach. I feel like this is kind of gonna be a rough estimate because honestly, I love spinach and I put it in everything. We are gonna do the same thing for this. Because I 
know this is definitely more than three quarters cup and that's okay. This is mine. And I can make it however I want. If you don't like spinach, you can put kale in this one's place or really any kind of leafy green. Spinach and kale um, are our family favorites. And so that's what we tend to use the most. Uh, I do have some pat choy growing over there, which I dice up on a regular basis. I just snip it right off of this thing. I love this thing. I don't have to worry about the way that the garden is doing outside, but I can actually have stuff growing fresh in here all year round. Okay, we're gonna mix it all together. We're gonna wait on this though. Side so we don't crush it all. Okay. Look. Look at that. I didn't even see it. No attention. Well, looks like we are gonna have at least 30 ounces. That's about as close as it's gonna get. Still have a little bit of liquid to soak up, so we're going to let that soak for a few more minutes. Now this recipe calls for four tablespoons of nutritional yeast, salt, and garlic. I have um, a vegan Parmesan, which basically that's what the ingredients are, so that's what I'm gonna use in its place. Because I love this stuff, and so does my family. And here again, I'm not going to be perfect. <laughs> also calls for half of a cup of raw cashews. A tablespoon of lemon juice. My family, we have to get the expensive kind of lemon juice because most of the others are made with citric acid, and as I've mentioned in some of my other videos, my son is very, very sensitive to anything that is even processed with corn, and citric acid is processed with uh, corn syrup. That's actually how it's fermented. And so we have to be very careful in our house what exactly we put into every one of our meals. I've heard of a lot of cheese sauce recipes that are made without actual dairy that have used these type of ingredients before and I've just never taken the time to do it and once I actually decided to do it this time I am so hooked. This stuff is absolutely creamy and delicious and has so many uses. Mmm. Mmm. That is delightful. I did not expect this to be so creamy. Mmm. I'm definitely going to link the recipe below. It's not my own, but ooh, buddy. Definitely worth it. Even if the casserole turns out terrible, which based on what's in this, uh, I can't see it tasting bad. You should definitely try making this. Okay, now we have our cheese sauce made. Our hash browns are fairly well rehydrated. I'm gonna actually go ahead and strain off anything that's left in them liquid-wise 
there is still a good bit of liquid in them and that's okay. We will just go ahead and strain that out and then we're gonna put that into our big bowl. This is actually a really neat way of preserving your food and keeping it for a long period because the dehydration, I mean, it keeps it for a very long time unless you end up with moisture in it. I think most things recommend like maybe a year. But how long do potatoes usually last? Because a year, my, my potatoes are not gonna last me a year. <laughs> okay, so my recipe says, we're gonna use a cup of the no cheese sauce and a quarter cup of nutritional yeast. And then we're gonna go ahead, put it all in there and then toss them in. Okay. So, ooh, they use a tablespoon of smoked paprika. My, son, my husband's gonna love this. All right, so we're gonna mix this together first. It's actually fluffed up nicely. I'm really kind of excited about this. This is supposed to be a breakfast casserole, but I really think this will be a delightful anytime casserole. All right, and then we're just gonna use this again because ugh, I love this. And I will go ahead and link the recipe to this stuff below because I seriously go through this entire container at least once a week. So, quarter cup of this, um, or more, whoops. Alright, it says one cup of the no cheese sauce. Look at how delicious that is. I am so excited about this. I'm going to be using this in a lot of things. Okay, let's try not to waste that. Make a huge mess. Ooh, look at that. That is looking so delicious. Mm. Alright, now it says we're going to use some steak seasoning. Uh, which is fantastic because steak seasoning is basically just salt and pepper with some other random seasonings There's no actual meat or anything like that Okay, so as it turns out, I do not have steak seasoning which Given our recent lifestyle changes, I guess that does kind of make sense So what we're gonna do is we're gonna improvise What I do have is some delicious smoked salt uh, This is something I just got recently we're gonna put a little bit of that. This is gochujaru or Korean red pepper flakes. And you know what, let's see what else we could put. Um, you know, honestly, I think that should be good. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And she says to use a half of a teaspoon. So we're just kinda of gonna guesstimate here. And put just a little bit of both. And my kids do not particularly care for a lot of spice, but the great thing about these guys is, is they're not super, super spicy. And then she says to use a tablespoon of smoked paprika. Mmm, oh, that smells so good. And we're gonna put that on there. gonna mix that all up and see what it tastes like because honestly I have no idea and the great thing about cooking this way is you can taste the food as you're making it unlike if you're making a hamburger or something like that you can't exactly taste it to see if you need to adjust the flavors oops this you absolutely can so let's see mm. Mm. oh that has such good flavor now, I do want a little more salt because I like salt, but not a lot, honestly. Just a little bit. That gochujaro gives it a nice little tiny heat, but nothing major, so my children will not hate it. And my husband will love it that much more. My husband absolutely loves anything that has like a crazy amount of spice in it. I like spice, but I do not like it to be crazy hot. All right, let's try that. 
Mm. Yep, I like it. Okay. Alrighty, and now we're gonna go ahead and mix in our spinach. Ooh, isn't this so pretty? Lightly kind of mix that in. And that is gorgeous. Then we're going to go ahead and pour it into our baking dish. It's actually filled this up a lot more than I had anticipated. Now, the recipe does not call for this, but just seems like this would be really yummy over the top because it is so creamy. And I'm actually going to sprinkle a little bit more. Hey, the oven's ready. Sprinkle a little bit more of the nutritional yeast over the top too. Maybe give it kind of like a crunch. Can't do breadcrumbs, but I think maybe that'll still give it a nice crunchy flavor to it, or texture, excuse me. Okay. Like I said, we go through a whole lot of this. And this is kind of an experiment anyway, so let's try it. All right, and then we're gonna stick this in the oven. So as soon as I put the casserole in the oven, I remembered I had frozen strawberries. So I decided I was going to go ahead and make a quick compote. Just mix some frozen strawberries with a little bit of raw syrup. And then you're going to go ahead and heat them up until the strawberries have thawed out. And as I'm doing here, you're going to go ahead and crush them down to your desired consistency. I like to cook mine down a little bit further after I've already crushed them up. Because as you can see, it's still pretty watery and I want it to be a bit thicker. So after I went ahead and crushed these up into a nice pulpy consistency, I kind of made it more like a thick jam. I went ahead and boiled it down a little bit longer and then it almost became jelly consistency or jam consistency because it thickened up through the pectin. So here we are taking it out of the oven and this recipe turned out to be absolutely delicious and will be one that we're going to add to our weekly rotation. The crust on top was really, really yummy too. We have our strawberry shortcake and our delicious cheesy casserole and we surprised my husband at work with it and he was so excited. It was delicious. So thanks for hanging out with us. Please give us a thumbs up and we will see you on our next video.